To me, the ones I grew up around are basically more graceful goats. Aloha! Aloha! Kayla and Carla here. Welcome back to our channel, Pleasing Nature Works, where we have fun with art. If you're new here, thanks for looking at our content. Today, I will be painting an 8x8 fawn in gouache. I'm in this phase where I really enjoy square paintings, and this size is not only great for shipping, but also for my detailed crazy painting style. As you see here, I started off with a little underpainting, which I've become a big fan of. I only recently learned of it while adapting my painting skills to gouache. But basically, it's like drawing out an image with a paintbrush instead of a pencil. I like to underpaint because it keeps me from dwelling too long on the drawing and composition, which I used to spend way too long perfecting. And as someone with anxiety, I would begin to psych myself out and doubt my abilities before I even picked up a paintbrush. But with underpainting, I can pretty much choose any color on my palette and use it to help me establish the image, while not worrying about erasing mistakes, because the layers cover it up in the end. Underpainting also allows me to emotionally reset and get into the mode before I get too far into the process and make rookie mistakes, because I wasn't ready to paint, if that makes any sense. After I got the initial outline of the fawn down, I did a little bit of color mapping to see which temperature variations of the colors I wanted to use. I find it easier most times to get a thin base color down in an area before I go in with thicker layers. But sometimes I get a little carried away and try to jump in with more opaque pencil sketch-like layers. Which can get me into a bit of time-consuming trouble but it all works out in the end.
many, many paintbrush strokes on the side of the watercolor paper will continue to grow as this painting progresses. And no, it's not because I'm making an abstract piece on the side, although that could be pretty fun to do as well. It's actually how I test my colors, which for me is necessary because it allows me to see how the colors interact with the paper and how they darken when they dry, as gouache does. This painting, like most of my paintings, as you will see, took a few sessions to complete. 
partially because I like to take my time to get it just the way I want it. In other words, I'm slow. <laughs> but also because I prefer to paint in a couple hour sessions at a time, so I'm not painting with tired eyes. And I don't get too far into the painting without taking a step back to see how it's coming along. It's crazy how different paintings can look depending on how close you are to them. I love gouache. I sort of stumbled onto it when I was looking for vegan and otherwise environmentally friendly art supplies when we had decided to start Pleasing Nature Works, and I'm so glad I did. When I was a kid, I dabbled with the idea of many potential professions for the future. Between being a musician in an orchestra, being an animator, being an illustrator, and so much more. But the idea of being an illustrator lingered the longest. So when I saw that gouache was used popularly in the 40s and 50s by illustrators such as those who worked with Disney, I was delighted. Every painting I've done since I started with gouache to me has this illustration feel to it that just comes naturally. Gouache has this wonderful capacity to provide bold, opaque colors while maintaining an innate softness that to me is really quite lovely. It lends itself to the style of the painter quite well, as it allows for a lot of different techniques. Another reason I really enjoy painting with gouache so much is because the paint in some form or another has been around for a very long time. Ancient Egyptians used a form of gouache, and in somewhat more recent past, it was used in the Renaissance. To my geeky self, there is something really beautiful about art forms that stand the test of time and having a connection to our ancestors. Okay, I'm done professing my love to paint. Let's move on.
Carla speaking, why a thon? Well, I find them both beautiful and adorable at the same time. I've never done a painting of a deer, adult or fawn, so it was a challenge I wanted to try. And when I came across this lovely photo of the one you see me adapting here on Pinterest, I just had to do it. I have also always wanted to do a painting of a meadow full of flowers, but I get a little nervous of my flower painting abilities and the sheer amount of flowers there would be. So I consider this sticking my toes into the edge of meadows and their subsequent paintings. way I wanted to paint my own Bambi. Even though I cry for Bambi every time the hunter kills his mother, I still think it's an underrated classic. That is definitely part of why I find Fawn so precious. That, and when you grow up on a farm with acreage in the Pacific Northwest and have the privilege of seeing deer families pretty much on a yearly basis, you can get attached. To me, the ones I grew up around are basically more graceful goats. They probably weren't the kind of deer I'm painting here. I'm not all that familiar with the different subspecies. But they still had those same delicate features and they loved eating the same foods as our goat fur babies and on occasion, they'd even have conversations with each other.
had no idea how this phone would turn out, but I must say, hopefully while maintaining some of my humility, I really like this one. As I mentioned earlier, I've never painted a deer before, and I've just barely painted flowers, so this painting really could have gone either way. But after spending hours on it, I'm happy. But what do you think? Let us know down in the comments below. This original painting is now available at our Etsy shop, Pleasing Nature Works. If you want this font for yourself, or you'd like to see other paintings, click our link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video!